Hey everybody, how's it going? In this lesson, we're going to talk about solving by completing the square. Now, I know you may see that in your class or you may see it on your test and you might not really know exactly how to do it or even how it works. So in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Whenever you're solving by completing the square, you want to look at the trinomial that you have on one of the sides of the equal sign. Normally, for the most part, they'll give you a trinomial and they'll set it equal to zero. Sometimes they might not, but you just go ahead and address it the same exact way that we'll do in this case. Here's what we'll do. We want to look at it and see if it's a perfect square trinomial. Now, if you don't know what a perfect square trinomial is, go ahead and watch the video that we have on there for you that shows you exactly how to factor a perfect square trinomial. What you would want to look at is to see if that's a perfect square and if this number is a perfect square, but it also has to be a positive. Also, the square root of this and the square root of that times 2 will give you that number. I know, sounds complicated, right? That's why you want to go ahead and watch that video because perfect square trinomials will definitely help you a lot in solving by completing the square. So if you look at this, you'll notice that it's not a perfect square trinomial. So basically what you have to do is you have to take this 9 and you want to put it to the other side of the equal sign. So you would go ahead and add 9 to both sides. Now you're left with x squared minus 4x. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a space right here. So I'm going to put plus, and then if you want, we can go ahead and just leave a space equals, remember those cancel out, and then 0 plus 9 will give us 9. Now, why did I put that space here? Well, in order for it to be a perfect square, where it's a perfect square trinomial, you would have to take the half of this number right here, the b, remember because it's ax squared plus bx plus c, you'd have to take half of that and square it. So what I do right here is I put negative 4 over 2, because that's taking half of it, and I square it. So now, if I want to rewrite that, I'll say it's x squared minus 4x. And what's half of negative 4? Well, negative 4 over 2, or half of it, is negative 2. So we'll go ahead and put a plus negative 2 squared. Now, here's the main thing that I want to show you guys. What you do to one side, you always have to do to the other. So if I added a negative 4 over 2 squared here, I have to do it on this side. So I'll go ahead and do a negative 4 over 2, and I'll square it there. So now, negative 4 over 2 gives me a negative 2 squared, which is equal to 9 plus negative 2 squared, because that's the same thing, right? So now we went ahead and simplified it a little bit. Now what I do, and this is my personal preference, and it helps my students a lot, I'm going to go ahead and keep it as x squared minus 4x plus negative 2 squared equals, I didn't do anything with this one just yet, but I'll go ahead and multiply that, or do the exponent. I'll take negative 2 to the second power, so that will be 4, positive 4, and I just add it. 9 plus 4 would give me 13, okay? So that's what I have so far. And all I did here, and I recommend you to show your work on that, is I took negative 2 squared and I just added it to 9. So now that gave me a positive 13. Good, okay. Now why didn't I go ahead and take negative 2 to the second power here? Well, when dealing with perfect squares, or completing the squares, we want to go ahead and make sure that we follow one simple step. And here's what it is. We completed the square by taking the half of b, which was negative 4, and we squared it, right? Well, it just saves me one step. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite everything really quick for you guys. Equals 13, OK? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of this. Now, I hope you wrote all this down and you're following along. But the reason why I don't multiply that out is because, I mean, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it, and then you would just factor it. But now all I notice is that, and this is x squared, so let me go ahead and put an x squared there. 
Now, you can do that, but what I do is I just take the square root of that, which is just x, and then I take the square root of negative 2 squared, and that's just negative 2, so I put that there, and I just square it. So it tells me exactly what I'm going to have inside of my parentheses, and I'll square that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, where did all that come from, right? I know. It's really kind of tricky if you want to look at it in a hard standpoint, but look at it from the easy standpoint. I just took the square root of both these and put it right here, and I squared it. Now, what you would do, which would take you a couple more steps, is you would go ahead and take negative 2 to the second power, and then you would factor it, and once you factored it, you would actually get that number again. So if you want to do that step, go ahead and do it. But it's just easier for me to do that, because now I know I set it equal to 13. So again, let me explain that one more time. x squared, I took the square root of it. I took the square root of negative 2 squared, which was just negative 2, and I put those in parentheses and I took it to the second power. On completing the square, you can do that every single time and it will always work. Now all I do is I just take the square root of both sides to cancel out this square, and we'll have x minus 2 is equal to, whenever you take the square root here, it would be a positive or negative square root of 13, and then all you want to do is add 2 to both sides to solve for x. And x equals, well, we want to add 2 here. We cannot combine these because they're not like terms. This is a radical, and this is just a whole number. So we would say 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. And that's what completing the square does. It allows us to solve for the variable by factoring, and we went ahead and did that by completing the square which is actually really cool. So we went ahead and did that. We found what x equaled by completing the square. And remember, we'll go over this step again in the next example to make sure you guys understand it. But like I said before, if you have a good foundation on factoring and you just want to take that to the second power and then factor it again, you're fine. You'll get the same thing right here, which allowed us to go ahead and solve for x.